Installing a new head unit into your car sounds really complicated, but trust me, it isn't. And today I have to prove that to you by installing a new head unit into the DZ Commodore. Now before you even attempt to start this build, there's one important thing that you need to know. What size head unit you're going for. Now the stock holding one is a double din head unit. Now you can go straight to another double din like this one here. Now this one's just like a standard one, but you can get some which have all screens and uh, Apple AirPlay and CarPlay or whatever the hell they got now. All that fun stuff. You can even get like cheap ones off China if you really want to go that route, that you like to play Netflix and all that crap. Either other, or you can get away with a single DIN one. Now, with a single DIN one, you will need a special little adapter, which I'll show you in a minute. However, if you are using a single DIN one, you'll still need a fascia plate. So do your research and find out which size head unit you need. All right, now let's chuck you over to James and a different jumper to show you what wiring you need. Now, before we get started, it's the best idea to understand what we're actually doing. Now, if you have an aftermarket head unit or a stock head unit, the process is basically the same. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking out the head unit to go back into the original connector. Now the factory connector looks a little something like this one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a Holden connector, which will have this cord on here, to an ISO. Now an ISO is just a standard pinout that most manufacturers use to connect any brand of stereo to any brand of car. Now your Holden ISO will look something like this one. I'll also have this little dongle out here. I'll explain what this one does in just a minute. Now to go from your ISO to your head unit, you need this, an ISO to your brand of stereo. Now my one's a Pioneer, so I've got an ISO to Pioneer. So basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna connect your ISO pin to each other. Now they can only go in one way, so you can't mess it up, which is always helpful. If your car has steering wheel controls and you want to use them, you need this little port. And you also need to keep this little box. And what this little box does is it plugs into here, it only goes in one way. Please hold as I continue to bloody plug it in the wrong way. Anyway, what this one does is now this plugs into a patch lead. Now a patch lead is suited to your style of head unit. Now I'm going to have a little photo up in the top corner and I also have one link down in the description where you can download it. It should be included in the box of parts that you get but it might also may not be. So anyway, your patch lead, sometimes you need to cut some wires. Now, for my JVC one, I need to cut the purple and the green wire. However, I'm not using a JVC, I'm using a Pioneer, which comes under the Sony, LG and Pioneer, which means I don't have to cut any wires, which is always a bonus. And now also under that one, we'll be using this little 3.5 millimeter jack. So what happens is this one plugs into the other end here, and then we'll use our 3.5 millimeter jack to go into the back of the head unit. Now all this sounds very confusing, and trust me, it is. But it gets a little bit easier when you know where to look. So I'm using a company called AeroPro. They're not bloody sponsored here, but hey, if they want to be, hit me up. And what you need to do is go on their website. Jumping onto AeroPro's website, we can enter the car, which in my case is a VZ Commodore. Scroll down a bit and enter the model of your head unit. Then you can choose whether you want to keep your steering wheel controls or not. If you don't, you'll just need this connector. But if you do, you'll even need this kit or to buy these two parts separately. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll find some installation kits, and I highly recommend grabbing one of these because you'll get pins to remove your stock head unit, a factory ISO plug, a fascia, and more. And with that process sorted, then we know exactly what we need to get, and it's going to make this installation a lot easier. But that's all the wiring done. Now, the next thing is because the holding unit is a double DIN space, and you could just go in and put a double DIN head unit and then just put a facer over it. What I want to do is I want to go a single DIN. And what this one does is it has a single DIN holder and a little pocket at the bottom, which is always helpful. So that's what we're going to be putting in place. Now, here we also have our head unit, which is a Pioneer. And this one should do the job nicely. And one last thing, if you do want your head unit to pick up the radio, which is always a good idea, you need to pick up one of these little adapters, which slots into the head unit and adapts to the car's antenna. Now, for all that out of the way, we can go install it into the car, but first, let's take out that old head unit. First step is to pop your bonnet, and now is a good time to see that your gas struts are going. But don't worry, a stick can hold it up while we disconnect the battery. You'll want to disconnect the negative terminal whenever you're working on electronics in your car. If your car still has a stock head unit in it, the first step you want to do is by pushing the pins into the head unit and then removing it out. But don't think it's job done just yet, you'll still need to remove all the plastic surrounding the head unit, just like a non-stock unit. If yours is in stock, this will be where you start your first step, and we'll be removing the tiny screw under the pocket. Make sure your handbrake is on because you'll need to take the car out of park. Start the center console and give the plastic a quick pull up, then you can pop out those clips. Don't forget to remove this little rubber pocket and then the piece should come right out. Make sure you unclip the window controls and put this piece off to the side. 
The next step will be to remove the two screws located here. With those gone, pop your top panel off and put it out of the way. Then you'll need to remove the four screws located in here. Then you can move this piece out of the way. If you can remove yours fully, unlike mine, just unplug the hazard lights first. Otherwise, just hang on to the side like I did. Remove any fasteners of your old aftermarket head unit if you have one and then slide it out. Now it's time to test the new head unit, so plug everything in and reconnect the battery. Once you turn the key, give everything a minute to light up and then everything should work perfectly. And with that working, now is a great time to check if your steering wheel controls are working before you put everything back together. However, I know Pioneer's controls need to be turned on in the settings first, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. The pocket is next, and this metal plate needs to slot into the top, move down, and then be fastened in with the included screws. My camera didn't record, but it slide the head unit in and fasten down if you need to. If you have a double gin hand unit, you will receive a few plates like this. You screw it into the side and have two little brackets at the bottom which then fasten into the car. However, this would look ugly if it went in just like that, so you need to cover it with a fascia plate. Double gin hand units need to go in first and be fastened down by the screws at the front, but single gin goes in afterwards. So put the centerpiece back, connect all the wires and then push the stereo in. Now it's time to go back and screw and clip all the pieces back in. Also, make sure that you hook your window controls back up. Time to set the controls. Turn on the head unit and click the button to go to the menu. Scroll to System, then scroll to S Remote. Once you're there, the default will be off. And then there is a Pioneer setting and a preset setting. The preset setting contains presets for multiple cars like Hyundai, Mazda, and Nissan. But we have a Holden Commodore, so we're going to go back to the Pioneer setting. Once it is loaded, it will ask you to press the volume up on the steering wheel for one second. Then that will change to press the volume down on the steering wheel for one second. And just like that, your new steering wheel control should work and your finished head unit will be installed. Following these steps is exactly how I put a new head unit into my Holland Commodore and if you follow them too, I'm sure you'll have success. However, if you don't have success, please feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll do my very best to answer them. If you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing to this car or any others, please feel free to follow me on my Instagram where I'll be posting the most. So thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another one.